Kiera Lee was in the middle of nursing school when her own health fell apart. This led her to find quantum and circadian biology and to start to question centralized medicine. Stay tuned to today's episode for more. Welcome back to the Evolving Wellness Podcast. My name is Sarah, and today I have Kiera Lee here on the show. Now, she was, as I mentioned in the intro, in nursing school when a medical mandate came down, and at the same time, her own health fell apart. So it was a perfect storm of events for her to find circadian biology and quantum biology. Now, Kira actually did my 21-day leptin reset back in 2022 when I first released it, and that was part of her getting down this road of healing and recovery. You'll also find her mentioning Dr. Corey Gasvini, who has been on the show a few times. I've tried to get him back on, but he has been kind of going off grid and off social media for a bit. But he's someone who is also very instrumental in my healing journey. So Kira and I have a really lovely and wonderful discussion today on centralized medicine versus how she is now working with clients and how she has transformed her own health using this information. I think you're really going to enjoy it. Kira is beautiful and brilliant and just a really lovely, lovely person. So make sure to head down to the show notes to follow her get all of her links. And I'm so excited for you to listen to today's episode. Enjoy it. Today's show is brought to you by Upgraded Formulas. They have my absolute favorite magnesium. You can get the best and only clinically studied stabilized nano magnesium supplement on the market from Upgraded Formulas using my code YOGI for 10% off. Did you know that magnesium is actually required for over 800 enzymatic reactions in the body? This clinically studied magnesium has proven to improve sleep quality and energy by over 60%, specifically improving light sleep measurement by 90%, REM sleep by 150%, and deep sleep by 250%. That means more energy, better mood, and deeper sleep. Who doesn't want that? What makes this the best on the market? This specific magnesium is nano magnesium, which means it is easier for your body to absorb and use. In fact, it is absorbed up to 99.99%, which means you'll feel the results instantaneously. Viva Rays, I love their circadian glasses for helping me keep my circadian rhythms on track. You can use code YOGI to save 15% over at Viva Rays. Now, a lot of glasses out there are not really what they say they are. And when you want to protect your health, your circadian health especially, which impacts your hormones, impacts your mood, your ability to sleep, and just basically be the best version of yourself, you really want to make sure that you are getting what is advertised. And I am personal friends with the owner of the company and know that he tests his lenses to actually block the frequencies of light, the blue and the green, that can be the the most disruptive of your circadian rhythm. So make sure you check out Viva Rays. Use the code YOGI to save 15%. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Evolving Wellness Podcast. Today, I have a really special guest from Australia, and we're going to talk about all things quantum and leptin and just whatever comes up her story. So Kara, thank you so much for being here today. That's okay. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited. Yeah. So let's, if you want to just introduce uh, my community to you, if they haven't already started following you and um, your amazing story and kind of how you got into quantum health, circadian health, how all of that came about. Yeah, of course. It's a bit of a long story, so I'll try not to um, bother everyone (laughs) too much. (laughs) But uh, so my name is Kira Lee. I'm from Queensland, Australia. And um, yeah, I guess I'll share my story. So I grew up in southeast Queensland on a cattle and bean farm, so always outside. I hated it as a child. I was like, Mom, I just want to live in town and I want Wi-Fi and I want to be really cool and go to the mall on the weekends with my friends. And now I'm like, oh, thanks so much, Mom, for keeping me (laughs) on the farm. Um, So I grew up out there, always barefoot, always in the sun, working on the farm on the weekends, all these things. You know, we, we bought our meat from the man up the road and we you know we had our own fruit trees and things like this. So eating very local and seasonal. Um, if you've been following quantum and circadian for a long time, then you know that everything I'm saying are like quantum and circadian practices. Uh, but we didn't know that then. That was just our natural life living on the farm. Um, 
And so that was all well and good. And I was a very healthy child. And then I went on to study um, a Bachelor of Psychological Science at university. And then I went on to study a Bachelor of Registered Nursing. And when I got uh, a little bit into this, I actually got a scholarship to finish my degree at a really good university. But that meant that I actually had to move from rural Sunshine Coast into Brisbane City, which that's the capital city of my state. So it's kind of like Salt Lake City, but just maybe a quarter of the size. Um, and so, yeah, I moved to the city. And for the first time, I was surrounded by blue light all night. Um, I was drinking fluorinated tap water for the first time. For the first time, I had a Wi-Fi modem in my house. Uh, I was eating takeaway because I was so busy and all these things. Um, and I started not feeling too well. And then I started working at my university as well, mentoring first year students. And so from sun up to sundown, I was pretty much just at my university inside all day long. And so I know now why I got sick, but then when it was happening, I didn't really understand. Um, and because I was studying nursing, I thought I knew everything about health. I was like, I know everything about health. My friends knew me as the health girl. And if they ever had a problem, they would ask me. And um, so my symptoms were vertigo, fatigue. I had painful monthly cycles for the first time in my life. Um, I was actually crying like for a whole week straight every single month, just bed bound in so much pain. I didn't even realize that it could be that painful. Um, I was really just in denial about that whole process because it had never been painful for me whatsoever. And I guess that shows the power of good circadian health. Um, and then something else was that I kind of had a picture perfect memory, um, not to brag, but I was pretty smart. I got good grades in school. And that's always something I really held dear to myself. And then when I started getting sick, I would be reading a university textbook and I wouldn't be able to remember the last page that I read. And so it was very frustrating for me. My grades started to drop. And yeah, I just wasn't in a good place. I mean, I would even wake up in the morning and just passing out when I woke up wouldn't even be, would be normal for me. My boyfriend would be like, oh yeah, I'm curious, just pass out on the ground. That's just something that would happen because I wasn't well at all. And now I know I had severe mitochondrial dysfunction and blue eye toxicity and all these things. Um, but so that happened. Uh, and then I was really sick. One day I posted on Instagram, does anyone know a good alternative healthcare practitioner um, in Brisbane City? Because up until then, I was asking, you know, spending thousands of dollars on labs, going to the doctors, going to the functional medicine practitioners, and I wasn't getting better. I asked um, the top healthcare practitioners and lecturers at my university, <laughs> yeah. these are my symptoms, what can I do to heal myself? And they just said, go vegan. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and, and exercise more. And so I did those things. And I remember pushing myself and pushing myself and feeling so horrible and just thinking, if I just do these things, like one day I'll feel better. And I just got worse and worse and worse. You know, no wonder why. Um, and so I posted online. I said, can anyone help me? And this is such a beautiful story. It makes me so happy. Um, and I'm going to say his name wrong. But Dr. Corey Gondavini, he oh, yeah. messaged me and he said, oh, hey, um, what's your symptoms? And I told him and he said, Kira, you're not sick. Your environment is. Mm -hmm. And we had kind of followed each other and talked about health for a while. Um, and so he had seen my transition from a rural area into the city. And I knew everything about health. So I was like, what are you talking about? Are you crazy acupuncturist from <laughs> America. Yeah. Um, but he explained to me about, about light a little bit. And he said, you need to watch the sunrise. And so I started doing that and I felt instantly better within three days. And then three weeks, I felt maybe like 40% of my symptoms were gone. I could actually wake up, not pass out, which is really great. Um, go to work again, all these things. And so I was sold. I didn't really understand it. I didn't know who Dr. Jack Cruz was. I didn't know who any of these other professionals were for maybe about a year, but I just started pulling up peer reviewed journal articles, reading about circadian health, reading about leptin, what these things do for our body. Um, and then I took your leptin retha after finally finding, finding you online. But yes, yeah, so that's kind of my story. And then I guess the last part is, is that how I came to be a decentralized healthcare practitioner is that um, after five years at university, COVID happened at this time. And the rules were if I was pulled out of placement for nursing and if I didn't get vaccinated, um, I wasn't able to finish my degree and graduate. And so that was very, very stressful. But it was like the perfect timing because as I had to make that decision, I was getting better from doing alternative therapies. Mm -hmm. And I was starting to look at the healthcare system and the way that we treat clients in a hospital, um, how cancer patients are put in a dark room and they're woken up every two hours and they get no sunlight and they're around all these non-native EMFs and all these things. And I was like, wow, our healthcare system is really broken. And if everything that I'm learning is true, which I believe it to be, um, 
the healthcare system is actually not healing people the way that they should. It's not the best environment for people to heal in. Um, and so I made the decision to embark on a decentralized university education. And so I spent the next two and a half years just reading blog posts, studying as much as I can, listening to people like yourself. And uh, now it's my full-time job four years later and I'm here talking to you. So that's been a fun journey. Amazing. I love that. And uh, Corey, I love Corey. He helped me mm-hmm. when I was just getting into this stuff. Like he was someone who I talked to on the phone multiple times and he just became a good friend of mine. And he's, he was like, listen, all the stuff you're doing with functional medicine, all this money that you're spending, all these labs, it's useless because you need to fix your environment. You need to fix your light. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, and I had been so obsessed with food and he just was like, Nope, this is what you need to do. And it ended up being the thing that worked. And so that's really, really amazing that, (laughs) that you also had reached out to him. I I think he's just such a great person. Mm -hmm. He is, um, super incredible and so talented in what he does. He's a really great human and, um, well, not human. He's a great man, but I mean, that's the power of light. You know, you spend so much money just like you did on functional labs and all these things. And then you start looking at the body through a quantum lens and you're like, wow, I'm actually doing everything wrong. And if I don't have this foundation of health, then I'm not going to, to get better. Um, and Corey did a great job of explaining that to me. And, you know, I feel like this is kind of God's plans in a way. Um, and, but I don't even know how we started following each other online. Like he lives in America and we're not even the same age. So I don't know how that happened, but I'm so thankful that um, yeah. we crossed paths. That's wonderful. And when did you start? So you started feeling better from all the light practices within like the first three days. What Mm -hmm. were the next things that you changed? Was it diet or was it more light? And then how long did it take you until you were like, all right, I'm just, you know, cause I I think a lot of people hear this stuff and they're like, it's cool, but like, how long is it going to take me to get rid of X, Y, Z health condition? Um, Mm -hmm. I think that's how people really think. Yeah, I think so as well. And it's different for everyone. We have to remember that. And I tell my clients, it's like, we've lived, you know, if you're 50 years old, you've got 50 years of poor light hygiene, the pathways that are meant to be functioning in your body. They're just not strong and they're not functioning anymore. So you have to retrain your body. And then depending on where you live, if you live in a city and you're not in the most optimal environment, it might take you a little bit longer as someone like me, who's living in rural Queensland, where I have really good light signaling, really strong solar yield, all these things. So it really depends on your individual, I guess, lifestyle and the things you choose to do in life. Mm-hmm. For me, watching the sunrise, I was in a massive red light deficit. So mm-hmm. watching the sunrise in the morning and just getting up at that time every day was super, super helpful. Um, I remember saying to, I think it was Corey, and I was like, oh, I'm not feeling better and I've been watching the sunrise. And he said, have you been opening your window? And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> So I was watching the sunrise from behind glass, which is hilarious. Now I know better. Yeah. Um, yeah. Three days, my body started waking me up at the same time every single day. And I started feeling just hydrated and um, my vertigo was pretty much gone completely. And then I wasn't even blocking blue light then either, like at all. I didn't really understand the light at night time. My boyfriend at the time definitely was not into blocking blue light. Um, but just little things, what was I doing? I was buying, um, box spring water instead of drinking tap water. Um, what else was I doing? I don't know. I feel like it was the water. It was the eating meat again. And it was what watching the sunrise. And that was enough to really halve my symptoms. And then when I was learning this COVID had happened. And so I decided to pack up my house, um, and move back to my mom's house at the time, um, in rural Queensland. And so I really, kind of took a leap of faith and understood that, okay, my environment, I started learning about non-native EMFs too. And I said, there's no way I can live in this apartment anymore. Like it's so riddled with EMF. Um, And so I made the decision to leave. And so those big changes yielded me really big results. But I also understand that not everyone can just pack up their house and leave. That would be so great if everybody could do that. Unfortunately, we can't. So there's lots of mitigation strategies, which I know you talk a lot about on your social media. Yeah. I think that's the tough thing for people is they get I think they get discouraged because they think they have to leave where they live. They have to change, um, quit their job, leave everything and move. And, uh, that's definitely not the message I try to put out there. Cause then people are like, well, why would I even try to do this? You know, if I have mm-hmm. to do that. And I'm sure you come across that with clients as well. Right. Yeah. It can get very overwhelming very, very quickly when you really start to understand the simplicity of health and the input signals to our mitochondria and these things. 
Um, and then, you know, one day I want to move, that's my goal, but we have to be mentally resilient and say, okay, you know, that's not doable for me right now. So what can I do in the short term to help my situation? Um, because we do have jobs and things in cities and we can't leave. And I always tell my clients, um, I have one, one lady and she's a, she's a nurse and she works until 1am most mornings. And Mm. she said, um, you know, I know I need to quit my job this and that but with her circumstances in her life if she quit her job and she had that financial stress I think that her health would actually be more downhill than where it currently is Mm -hmm. so you have to add up all the different areas of your life and look at what you can mitigate um, and look at what you just can't change right now and and work towards that in the long term Um, but yeah everyone wishes they could just quit their job and move to a farm that's kind of the goal everyone seems to have in 2024 but it just, it just takes a little while. So my advice would be just don't put pressure on yourself. Understand that little changes can be big needle movers for mm-hmm. people. Just Absolutely. like turning the Wi-Fi off at nighttime, blocking blue light, going for a walk in the morning. And, you know, diet can go a long way too. For me, it's like understanding that if you do shift work and you do live in the city, then a carnivore diet is probably the best thing for you mm-hmm. um, because blue light and you're obviously quite stressed and these do the exact same things to our body as carbs do. It's like when you understand and you have the education to empower yourself and understand how you need to mitigate the choices you make in your life, you really take the power back into your own hands um, and understand that there's a lot you can do. Yeah. I think that that's one thing that people, when they watch YouTube or, you know, get listened to the podcast, I'll get a lot of YouTube comments and people are like, what can I do? I have shift work. What can I do? I have a job. Like all the stuff you talk about is not realistic for me. And that's I think the thing that I I guess I need to do a better job of talking about is that you can improve your health, even if you are, you know, doing shift work at this time and living in a city at this time. So you mentioned doing more of a carnivore approach, doing maybe more of like a ketogenic diet for someone with shift work. What would that look like? What, how would you approach that? And what kind of strategies would you give that person? Let's say if they had to work till one o'clock in the morning, every night or morning. Yeah, exactly. And again, it's, it's hard and it's different for everybody. I mean, my client has children. Um, so she, she has to get up at 6am in the morning. And so it's not like she's going to sleep until nine or something like this, which most shift work people do because sleep is important. Sleep quality is important. Um, so supporting that. But because she's getting up at 6 a.m. for her children, I know that getting outside in the morning is super helpful. I know that grounding her feet on the cold, you know, grass is super helpful. And then eating a more carnivore-based diet. So she does eat some carbohydrates, but especially for breakfast, it's just a very big protein-dense meal, um, eating three meals a day. She fasts as well. So once a month we're doing a 48-hour fast just to help promote those cell cleanup processes Um, because she's going to have a lot of damage to her cells from her environment in which she works and in the way she lives her life. And and there's there's some some practice we've implemented. I mean, she doesn't eat at work either. That's Mm, super important. important, And then also, you know, supporting her mineral stores because her body's up a lot of stress. It's like I love hypertonic minerals, Celtic sea salt. All these things are super supportive of all of those biochemical reactions because they do um, matter in some ways. Um, in your in your body and helping that water actually get into our mitochondria because we know that our mitochondria favors our salt water they actually originated um, in the ocean and so we need that salt water to actually hydrate that mitochondria and move that water around the body yeah but it's 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 super hard and I feel like just understanding that no it's not ideal um, but then here's the mitigation strategies that you can use um, is is super important but she does still get stressed over it sometimes I think it's hard not to So for her, it's like doing the yoga, doing the meditation, being aware of her own mind and things super helps, um, helps her a lot when she's um, working back to back shifts and things like that. But it is hard. And my heart does go out to people who, you know, I'm very blessed that I've managed to make this my um, career so I can work, you know, outside in the sun and things like this. And I'm very grateful. But I also came into this at a very early stage in my life when my life wasn't really um, set up. So I was able to make changes, but. Yeah. You didn't have kids and husband and (laughs) all the things that are make it difficult to just pick up and move, but it's really, I think it's wonderful. You're working with people and actually seeing 
these things in action because there's so many people that talk in theory, you know, like uh, Dr. Sarah, she's Dr. Sarah Pugh. She's staying here with me right now. And we were talking about these Instagram doctors and they're like these large influencers, right? With PhD or doctor or whatever behind their name that have never truly worked in hospitals or with clients and talked mm -hmm. to them and seen how people actually live. And they have all these like, I don't know, theories on how things work. And they, they talk really uh, well, and they speak with authority oh, and nice vocabulary. Yeah. And people just, they eat it up. And this doctor says da da da. I'm like, okay. But in the real world, <laughs> you know, <laughs> when you work with a real person and see yeah. how these things play out in their life, it looks completely different than how it's being presented uh, mm -hmm. in these different places, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's exactly right. It's, um, I always say that a good coach is working out how to get someone from A to B and not telling them how yes. to do it because yeah. life is stressful. Life is ever changing. And so things are always going to change in your life. Um, and this is why I think that education is so important not just blindly taking the advice of, of a doctor or this and that, because honestly, they're all trained from really outdated textbooks mm -hmm. and then not putting as much emphasis on quantum and circadian health as they should be being the foundation of health. And so it's like, if you don't have quantum and circadian health, right, you know, the biochemistry part can wait, you know, let's get the foundations right. Cause that's always going to influence the biochemistry. And then let's go in, you know, let's look at the 5% remaining symptoms that we have, look at the biochemistry and see what we need to do and what to work towards. Um, but working with clients in real life has taught me so, so much, so much about human psychology and little tricks that people can implement. Um, and that's where the experience comes in. Cause as you, as you said, like everything's good when you read it from a textbook, but you need to be able to practice that. And that's why nurses, you know, they do 120 hours of placement before mm -hmm. they can actually work on their own because the real life in-person skills are so important. You can't just read a textbook. Um, it doesn't work like that, unfortunately. Yeah. And kind of knowing what you know now, would you ever want to, if you had the opportunity to work in a hospital or work in more of a centralized environment, just to, just to see what that's like, or you're like, I have no interest in it. I want to just completely de be a decentralized, you know, healthcare provider. I have no interest in it at all. <laughs> I mean, it does tempt me sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, and that's reprogramming my brain because I was taught from a very young age my grandfather you know grow up get a degree work a job all these things like that's success but that's actually not what success is like mm -mm. so for me it's like why would I go back to an industry I kind of view it as a toxic relationship it's like if they do it once I'll do it again it's like why would I go back to an industry that's so cold-heartedly just removed me from the system which mm -hmm. I'm so thankful for now is the best thing ever for me but you know everyone just thinks this and that and um you're making the wrong decision and how could you and it's like everyone loved me so much I was Kira everyone knew me at the university and then all of a sudden it was no one knew me and so I'm like okay just because I have a difference of opinion to you doesn't mean that you could treat someone like that because you uh, decided you were not gonna succumb to forced medical yeah I just procedure. had different opinions and my opinions then were very a lot smaller than they are now yeah. um, but I was like can I just have some information on how this affects fertility and I couldn't find any um, and no one had any so for me, it's like, well, until you show me that, I'm not going to get this. And I can always yeah. put something in my body, but I can never take it out. Um, and I'll and tell you, just to didn't. validate that, like Carrie and I in our fertility course, I would say probably 75% of the ladies, and we had some men as well in our fertility course, did go through that particular medical procedure. And, you know, were coming to us for a fertility course because they had had multiple year, you know, mul not multiple years at that point. Cause we just started doing the course in 2022, but they had had a couple of years of just like, can't get pregnant. What's going on? Multiple miscarriages. Mm -hmm. Like just, I mean, it, we have enough issues think, with fertility worldwide without, without adding doing the that. On top of that, you know, yeah. um, I have clients that aren't even, well, I don't have clients anymore because they're pregnant, but I had, I had clients that never even got the vaccine and they're still super healthy still, and eating yeah. very local and seasonal and they're still struggling with it because they yeah. don't have the right part. Right. Um, but it's so funny that you mentioned this because my university, they sent me an email last year. They're like, congratulations, Kira. Like, we have good news. The vaccine mandates have been lifted. You can come back and finish your degree. And I was like, why would I do that? So yeah. why would I? Um, 
and for me, it's like my last placement is full of um, night shift. So I just. Oh, no. Uh uh. No, you know not to do that. No. And morally, I don't think I could do that because, I mean, I had um, a client who had appendicitis recently, mm. well, actually about four months ago. And so he asked, his family asked me to go to the hospital with him and just oversee his care. Mm. Um, and so I did that. And it was just so sad. It was oh, so yeah. sad. It's terrible. And then something I realized, Sarah, is that when we have post-op complications, so if you look at the statistics, something that's really on the rise is post-op complications after um, simple procedure keyhole surgeries. So whether yeah. that's appendicitis, gallbladder removal, um, a simple bowel obstruction, right, which from my point of view now, I'm like, okay, well, that's actually caused by chronic dehydration um, in part, right? So they already have that issue of lacking red light, poor mitochondrial dysfunction, no minerals, um, all these things. And so something that happens is um, post-op complications. And so when you have a surgery like this, um, specifically a bowel, bowel obstruction fix or appendicitis from, um, and your appendix has been removed, you actually need to have a bowel motion to be discharged from the hospital. That's your discharge criteria to make sure your digestive tract is actually functioning optimally. And a lot of people don't have that. And what they have is severe constipation. Um, and then they have to go in and have another surgery. Oh, so a no. secondary a secondary op to go in and fix that secondary bowel obstruction or um, they don't know why your bowels aren't working so they actually have to physically go in and what they do is they make a long incision on your stomach they pull out all of your intestines and then they literally siphon through your intestines to try and find the complication the post-op complication oh my God. Um, but usually i um, like with my client's case they never found any post-op complication and it just is what it is and so for me it's um, chronic dehydration And then I look at the environment that these people are in, drinking um, chemical-filled water, for one. They're around in these little rooms that the windows are bolted shut. So there's just so much non-native EMF in there from all the equipment. They're being woken up every two hours at night to have their observations taken as well. They're being fed sugar. Mm -hmm. Like I looked at my client's plate and it was like maybe like my palm size meat, a whole thing of mashed potatoes two jelly cups, custard, cake. It's just, I can't believe this is what we're nourishing sick people with. Um, And then no red light in the room either because they're surrounded by blue light 24-7. And then they're stressed as well. So it's like I have, you know, there's no doubt in my mind that all of these things, their environment is causing these post-op complications. And if the mainstream, you know, medicine would just actually admit that a lack of red light causes dehydration on a cellular level, then we could actually minimize post-op complications, which would actually improve the, the efficiency of the hospitals and be a positive in their regard. So, yeah, you know, I knowing this and seeing it, I probably would have a mental breakdown if I went into the hospital and saw this happening to a lot of people at once. I would, my heart would just break. It's terrible. And I want to talk more about this, but maybe for anyone listening that doesn't understand, like how does red light rehydrate the body? What's so special about it? And why are most people so red light deficient? Oh yeah. So you want me to talk about that? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. You're going to talk about that. Um, Yeah, of course. So red light was very hydrating for our body. So it actually tells cytochrome four and our mitochondria to make water. Um, And the pathway is quite complex, but we have chromophores and all these things. And Basically, it makes our body internally produce more water. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that's on a cellular level. Just because we drink water um, doesn't mean that we're going to absorb it. It can just get, you know, excluded from the body. Um, And you'll see this a lot in in athletes as well who drink a ton of water and then 20 minutes later, like, oh, I need to go to the bathroom. Or if you're Mm -hmm. someone who wakes up all night to go to the bathroom, that's because you're not actually absorbing your water and that uric system is actually broken. Um, And so you might need to look at your mineral status for one. So adding Celtic salt um, so that can actually be absorbed into your body efficiently. And then also the red light too, because if you don't have red light, um, you're not going to be making water intracellularly. And then another thing is, it's just improving your mitochondrial function as a whole. So improving that oxygen tension, um, improving the way ATPase functions and moves that mitochondria across your electron transport chain. And that all really just comes with, the most foundational, simple practices of viewing the sunrise, grounding, doing all the circadian things that Sarah talks about on her page. Yeah. I love that. I love that you're, I mean, like I said, before I even turn on the camera, like the more people we can get talking about this, the better. And Mm -hmm. just, I continue to educate people on this because it is crucial. And we tend to overcomplicate. I'm sure in uh, school, you had to learn about all this biochemistry, right? It's like biochemistry, 
yada, yada, yada all the time. But when you start to look at things through this different lens, and like you said, just do these very, very basic, simple things, you support the mitochondria, you support cellular hydration, you support because each of those respiratory proteins in the mitochondria, they're, they're surrounded by water, right? They're surrounded by that exclusion zone water. So if we have low exclusion zone water, you know, we can't make adequate ATP and deuterium depleted water in the body. So we're going to just continue to have health issues. And that's like something I know Dr. Sarah has been talking about. Carrie talks about it all the time, but this cellular dehydration, you cannot fix it by simply just drinking more water because I'm sure you come across this all the time with people. Well, how much water do I need to drink? How much minerals do I need to add? And and I'm yes. like, let's talk about the quality of your water before we even talk about what How water much? you're drinking, because two right. liters of my water is not the same as two liters of the water that you're drinking. So let's talk mm-hmm. about that for a second. And yeah, we didn't even touch on the fact that our, you know, red light helps the water, the metabolic water in our body become a battery and mm-hmm. literally give us energy. Yes. And, you know, so these are things that the textbooks don't talk about. They think that the main function of the mitochondria is to produce ATP, but ATP just helps us semiconduct electrons in our body and is more of a byproduct, in my opinion, than mm-hmm. water, the proton gradient that powers the ATPA, CO2, all of these things. Yeah. And and it's so funny because when I, um, I wish I had my textbook here, but when I started learning this, I was like, I wonder what uh, my textbook says about um, the electron transport chain or something. And so I opened up my textbook and I was actually finding little snippets of information that I had never, I probably have seen, but they didn't register for me because that was not the part of the textbook that my professor was idolizing or really pinpointing down to me. Um, and so they even had a photo of the mitochondria and um, they were talking about light and the mitochondria. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is so insane. It's like I've seen this book for the first time ever because I'm coming back to it with new knowledge. I'm able to decipher it in a different way than, you know, 20-year-old me did. Um, And so it's really cool to go back and see the information there. It's definitely not as in-depth as what it should be, but they do touch on some of these practices. They just need to go deeper. And thankfully we have people like Dr. Gerald Pollack who are, you know, doing remarkable things um, in the space of water. Yeah. And I love, you know, I talked to to Dr. Pollock and he really talked about how Gilbert Ling is the one who it's just words are difficult. Like explaining these things can be really difficult to do conceptualize. And, you know, Gilbert Ling was really the one who surmised that mitochondria's job was ATP was not the most important thing that the mitochondria were doing. It was the water and how that really was crucial for the energetic processes of the body for communication between organ systems and just this overall coherence of the body. And I think that people just, again, they think of water. It's just like, well, what do I drink and how much? And like, what, you know, it's like, oh, we just work so differently. (laughs) than I think that anyone ever really acknowledges, you know, I think it's fun when you get those people though, who really don't understand anything from quantum or circadian. Yeah. First of all, I'm like, how did you even find me? Because in order of woo-woo out of centralized science, like I'm way over here. So I don't know how you ended up here, but thankful that you did. Um, and secondly, it's kind of fun because yeah. I guess my niche in quantum and circadian, like kind of where I fit in is educating people. So um, if you're a functional doctor or something like this and you want to understand quantum, I run little courses and well, not anymore, that's over, but I was running courses. Um and so the education piece can be not stressful, but you're, you know, answering big questions. You have to really put on your nurse hat and use all the words that you learned in university because that's the people that you're trying to communicate to. Um, whereas when you have people that know absolutely nothing, it's so fun because you can really put the magic back into biology and be like, yeah, we make water and then it gets structured to a battery and this red light does this. And, you know, a- the magnetic flux of the AT people's oxygen to blah, blah, blah. And then it's like, wow, that's so cool. And it's like, I don't know, it's just a different um, experience. It is. It is like uh, Dr. Sarah and I keep talking about wanting to make a group. And the requirement is like, you have to know absolutely zero about what we talk about. <laughs> you, can, you can't be, um, you need to be uh, over 250 pounds. Like we want just like people that are like eating fast food and like just not doing anything. Mm-hmm. not doing any sort of special diet, no keto, no carnivore. We don't want that. We just want people who are like 
standard American diet, watching TV, phone in the face, staying up all night on their phones. Like that's what we want. We want to make a group of that because I think that would be the most fun and they can make the most simple changes and see, I think the biggest and fastest results, <laughs> but mm -hmm. it's just, yeah. yeah, definitely. That would be awesome. Max, yeah. Dr. Max Goldhain and I were talking at Regenerate, um, and he's like, we need to do our own studies. We should get a hundred yes. um, blood glucose monitors and send them out to people all over Australia and tell them to eat X amount of carbs, you know, one day under blue light and take your blood glucose levels and then go eat it outside and take your blood glucose levels and see um, how that impacts your results. And then we can put that all together and form our own decentralized studies, um, which I thought would be pretty cool. But I yeah, I mean, simple yeah. changes yield just such big results. And yeah. uh, I think those people that you're talking about specifically could definitely, um, you know, benefit from just even blocking blood in that time. Exactly. I mean, I think most people, I think most people, like 99% of people, I'm going to even go on a limb and say, think that wearing blue blockers at night is like stupid, you know? And then there was this big media campaign not too long ago to basically discredit blue blockers and put up all these studies about the, how they don't work, this, that, and the other. And I'm like, you're all, ta you're talking about clear blue blockers. No, they don't work. We all know that like, hello, obviously that's not going to work. You know, it's you like, that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about the yellow and the red ones. Right. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that's so sad. Yeah. I mean, blue blockers aren't perfect. And that's something that I've really realized lately from talking to Rudy from Viva Rays. Yeah. Um, that conversation was incredible. He was, and I don't know why I didn't put it together myself first but he was talking about how when light comes to the blue light blockers it can create narrow peaks um mm. in, in certain wavelengths and I was like that's so true and then he related it back to John Ott and how he found that narrow peaks in the pink wavelength um, wavelength impacts mental health like a ton um and so he's saying the problem with a lot of blue light blockers is that they're cheaply dyed and so mm -hmm. that actually is what's occurring with the light that's actually coming into your eyes. And while it is better and people do see results long-term, that should never be the optimal solution. Um, and so yeah. his glass brand is like tested. Um, and what does he do? He manufactures his lenses with wood, mm -hmm. which is incredible because it doesn't conduct EMF and stuff like this. So that was a really interesting conversation. Maybe I'll have to get him. You might have to get him on the podcast to talk yeah. about that. Yeah. Rudy is a long time, uh, podcast sponsor and I don't take mm -hmm. on a ton of sponsorships, but Rudy is somebody that I like he, and he is somebody I credit with helping me to get pregnant. Like, because he's somebody that we, I mean, you, with Rudy, you hung out with him. You have these like long, amazing esoteric conversations, but he's also just like really smart about the light piece and the quantum and, and talks and thinks about things that most people don't. And so I think when people even like look at something like blue blockers, again, you can go and get a, a cheap pair off Amazon. And I think that that is a good place to start for anyone. And that's mm -hmm. what I tell people. And they're like, Oh, do I have to buy a bunch of stuff to do your leptin course? And I'm like, literally blue blockers, like, and you can get a cheap pair. <laughs> And that you're, you're, it's going to do really a lot of good for you. But if you want to go fancy, like, you know, then I have some good brands for you, but, um, that's fair. That's fascinating. <laughs> yeah. He's, yeah. he's so smart. I just, yeah, yeah. yeah. very yeah. knowledgeable and just convey these, in, this information just so seamlessly. I really yeah. like, it. it's good to hear that he sponsors your podcast. He's, um, oh, yeah. Yeah. I met, had the, um, fortunate, fortunate city. I don't even know the word to use. I yeah. know I was able to meet him in El Salvador. So that was really great. Yeah. He's, he's a great guy. You met a lot of people. I saw the, um, the age of light conference that you went to. So it looked mm -hmm. like that was a really fun experience. I know Max was there and Tristan, who's going to be on the podcast soon and, um, just all kinds of people. Right. Yeah. I mean, it was, um, interesting because I feel like half the people that went were tech CEOs and oh, really? you know, I probably maybe got that wrong, but they seemed more on the investor side of things. And mm. then the other half were quantum and circadian based um, practitioners or people who just really liked interested in and liked the space. Um, but yeah, it was, it was super fun. The event was nice. Um, Jack Cruz spoke and announced the medical freedom laws for El Salvador. So, you know, the law that's being passed right now is um, all of their street lights. They're not going to admit blue light at nighttime. Oh. Um, no fluoride in the water, no cloud seeding. Um, 
they're fixing the problem with dirty electricity, like improving the power grid, EMFs, all these things. So their whole thing is that they want to make public spaces safe. Mm. Um, and yeah, free El Salvador from these environmental toxins, specifically blew out at night time to help the people of El Salvador achieve better health. Um, and I think it'll take a long time to implement. But yeah. even the fact that there is a government out there willing to say, okay, these things are toxic. Um, they've read the peer reviewed data and now they're actually making changes. I think that's really cool. I wish that my town would do that and get rid of the street lights outside of my house. Um, Cause they keep, <laughs> I feel great. like they keep getting worse and worse. And then I'll get comments under these videos on YouTube and people are like, oh, the street lights are so toxic and they're so terrible and they keep getting worse and worse. And same with the headlights mm-hmm. on the cars. I'm like, yeah, it's. Yeah. Good, good pair of blue blockers. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> you know. Uh, I feel like you're just going to turn into this old lady and you're like sitting there just like, I don't know, do those scenes of the movie and they're just like smoking a cigar and just like, just get blue light blockers. I don't know what to tell you guys. I know. <laughs> I've been saying this for years. Um, but it's so true. Like even driving into my estate, it's like you can see they're all amber lights in the older part. And then as you get into the new, like, you know, round three of the estate, it's just like so blue LED. Um, which is upsetting. Yeah. It's everywhere. And people literally have no, I, like I said, I think it's literally like 99% of people who just don't even have any idea that this is causing some sort of a health issue for them. It's, Mm -hmm. uh, it's, well, they think it's just something that's like woo woo and that is is the root cause. Um, but it actually is the root cause and it's something that you need to take seriously. It's not something that you do alongside a different therapy it's like this is the main therapy and then it's everything not an afterthought happening. it is the thing yeah it's it's just wild to me still because I'm like you know I go on Instagram probably too much um because mm-hmm. it's where I talk a lot about things you know besides the podcast is where I'm really trying to get this message out there and I'm just every day this I get bombarded with it's parasites it's mold it's this it's that and I'm like but do you understand that if you have adequate exclusion zone water in your body to protect the cell and to protect the mitochondria that these can't get in, you know, and it's like everything that you're doing is dehydrating your body on the cellular level so that these pathogens are getting into the body, but it doesn't have to be that way. You know, it's, Mm -hmm. and it's kind of like, I love talking about this stuff and having more and more of us in this space to bring this message out there to people, because if you go down the parasites and mold and all these, you know, all these rabbit holes is pretty daunting and it's expensive. And then I don't see a lot of people having miraculous recoveries from all of these protocols. And so I just keep on thinking like, there's got to be a better way for people than what they're currently doing, you know? Yeah, I think it's hard for people too because it is, um, you know, I always tell my clients when they come on board, I'm like, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm a party pooper. You can't, you know, go out at night time for like the next four weeks while we fix your leptin or, you know, you can't drink Coke at 7 p.m. and and these things. And I try to make it as fun as possible. So I'm like, yeah, you can have chocolate at midday straight after your main meal or something. So I, I try to give them flexibility as much as I can, but you know, it is things you have to implement and it's not for everybody. It is, you know, it's proof of work. So if you have bad health, you need to put in the work to get good health. It just doesn't happen. It's, it's not, that's not how nature works, unfortunately. Yeah. And you know, I wish I tell my clients, I'm like, I wish I could give you a pill. I wish I could say a hundred dollars. Here's this pill. And it's going to fix everything for you. It would make my job easier and your life a lot better. Um, but I just can't, I can't do that. Unfortunately. Um, And as you're talking about mold and parasites, you know, what you said is exactly right. When you are consistent in this behavior and you rearrange your life to live a quantum and circadian friendly life and diet and you undo the damage done. So, you know, reversing leptin resistance is something that you have to do first. And that might take a little bit more um, dedication and a little bit more changes, but you can have more flexibility in the end. You know, if you're not doing these things consistently, yes, mold will reoccur. Yes, parasites will reoccur. It's like you need yes. to make this daily routine into your life. You know, just live like a human, <laughs> live like men and right. women. And, you know, nature doesn't want you to be sick. You weren't born in this world. You know, God wasn't like, yeah, I'm going to put all these people, my people on the earth, and I'm just going to make them sick. And, you know, the sun that touches them everywhere is going to kill them. It's like, no, that's not the way that the world was designed. 
Right. The world is designed to keep you healthy and you are in no way separate from the light that's around you or the ground that you're meant to be touching with your bare feet. Um, it's actually everything else, all the things that the humans created, the really smart humans that's actually making us sick. And um, I think there's a lot of Instagram accounts, like you talk about lots of YouTube channels that are very big on mitotoxins and mm -hmm parasite cleanses and these things and they almost have a cult following yes and then you see them now slowly trickling in the quantum stuff but they never act like that's the main thing it's always something secondary and right. I don't know whether they know it or not um, because they've built a business yeah. on that foundation of selling you know their family's income relies on them selling parasite cleanse protocols and tablets to, to go alongside that and the commission from their mm -hmm. implantable blood glucose monitors and all these things so it's not like they can change it. So it's like you either wait for industry to change or you make the change yourself. Um, but I think realizing that um, is definitely necessary if you're in the space. I think what people don't realize is that functional medicine and, you know, not to, because I have a lot of people that kind of listen to the podcast. And I never, ever mean to shame anyone or to uh, discredit any work that anyone does at all. I have respect for practitioners who are out there trying to help people. But what I found, I don't know if you feel the same way that functional medicine is just another like version of the allopathic centralized medical model. It's the same thing. Just like, it's like kind of like putting lipstick on a pig in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you know, Western medicine gives us pharmaceuticals and then the herbalists give us herbs and mm -hmm. functional practitioners give us a supplement, but it's, it's all based off that same design as um, your body's not broken, but here's a product that can fix you. Um, yeah. Sorry, your body is broken and here's a product that can fix you. Whereas we're saying, no, your body is fine. It's just trying to function in an environment that's not designed to support its optimal function. Um, and, you know, I don't think that supplements can always be bad. I think there's definitely right. a time and place for them, especially depending on the client and what they're willing to change in their life. Yes. Um, I'm also starting to believe that maybe like a liver flush or something like this isn't yep. too bad given the right time and place. Agreed. Um, but the needle is just so on the wrong end of the spectrum. Now we get kind of need to move it back over here so yes. we can find a happy medium in my opinion. Yeah. I'm it's doing kind of like, oh, sorry. Oh no, go ahead. I always like to use the example of um, Victoria's secret models. Do you have them in America? Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. I remember when they were all size zero, 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 zero. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden everyone complained and then they were all like plus, 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 plus. And now, but that needed to happen. Right. To, for us to land somewhere in the middle when it's just normal people now can actually be Victoria's Secret models with a healthy weight. Exactly. Uh, and that's kind of like what we're seeing at the moment in the industry. So I yeah. agree. I completely agree. Yeah. It's, it's tough for people to kind of get moving in this direction and to have a light bulb turn on when again, it's like, you just have to start thinking differently about your health. And when you look at it from this lens, like I said, I think it's just, it's super empowering for people um, and there, there, I think there can't be enough of us out there really just spreading this mm -hmm. message and talking about this stuff because people are not getting better. I'm not seeing a lot of people get miraculously better from taking all these things. Um, I don't know about you, but I'm just not seeing it. It's so sad. And then you take yeah. them off of all of those things and they get better just by getting off of all the supplements. So, yeah. Yeah. you know, that's one thing. Um, but I mean, it's exciting that this is out there and I'm so grateful for the doctors that brought this stuff to life and carried the torch and passed it on to us so that now, you know, we can do the work and educate people. Um, and I think that truth resonates when people hear this or they see just how ecstatic you are about what you're talking about. They really are like, oh my gosh, okay, this is it. This is what I've been searching for. Yeah. Um, and so truth resonates and I think people can sense that. Um, and they get excited too. I find that a lot of people... Um, the problem isn't just physical, it's also emotional. And we know that that's intertwined with the light. But mm -hmm. if you don't believe that you deserve better or you're not happy with life or you feel unfulfilled or perhaps you're someone who's never heard an ounce of truth in your entire life, and that's not hard to come by in today's society, yeah. you hear something like this for the first time and you get told, no, your environment's broken, not you, it's kind of like a sigh of relief. And they actually have heard truth for the first time. And now I have people who have never been interested in academics at all, spending their nights studying because they are so empowered and just are so excited to learn about how their body truly works and to be on the forefront of cutting edge science. And so that kind of heals 
other wounds inside of them as well. It's not just what it's actually doing for their physical health. It's what they're doing for their purpose. And mothers who have sick children now are like, okay, I can fix my child myself. And they're so empowered in that. So, you know, I, I'm excited to see just how many people we can affect and impact. Um, Definitely. It's good, good movement. And yeah. thank you for being such like one of the people at the very start. Um, I think I said in this webinar this was recording or when we started yeah. talking off camera that I took your left and reset course and that um was just you know it just did so many wonders for me and I was like wow wow like I remember just listening and every time I listened to one of your episodes I would sit back and just think wow and just it was 30 minutes of just listening and letting that process into my brain and undoing the things that I had heard um and then actually seeing the results in my own life was just something completely different Mm-hmm. And when then your health gets better, you start to be able to think in ways you never thought before. Things you worried about before don't yes. matter anymore. And yeah, limiting beliefs cease to exist and the world is your oyster when you have good health. I believe uh, it's so true. It's so true. And then you just want you want to help other people, you know, like mm-hmm. the, you can't help, but go out there once you have come from this place where you have felt so terrible and weren't able to do for yourself. And then you are doing these really, really simple things. And it's like, I have to tell other people about this. I have to get this message out there because there's so many other people that they're not even just doing the very basic things that can move Mm -hmm. the needle for them, you know? And I'm sure you get messages all the time from people who are like, Hey, I started watching the sunrise and wearing blue blockers at night. And I just started sleeping through the night for the first time in like 15 years. Is it really that simple? Mm -hmm. I'm like, for some people it can be, you know? Yeah. I had one um, woman and she's like, oh, I'm so, where does she live? Like um, Minnesota. Mm -hmm. And she said her children wouldn't go to sleep until 10 o'clock at night, especially her child. She's like, they just have so much energy. I think it's because I feed them so well. And I was like, yeah, look, you know, put some blood blockers on them. And she had spent years and years of just, you know, being so exhausted up until midnight. And then she messaged me two days later. She's like, my kids are asleep and it's eight o'clock. <laughs> I know. I'm just like, yeah. mm-hmm. You didn't have to do, you know, five years of just sleepless nights. You just had to fix your light environment and <laughs> your kids would be sleeping and you could relax. <laughs> exactly. I mean, that's the thing with my daughter. She's 16 and everyone's like, oh, well, teenagers, they have a different um, chronotype they change their sleep patterns. And I'm like, no, that is not They're true. They're not owls. Your daughter's a night owl. No, they are not. Like if you- No, she's not an owl. Room, she's a person. And we're supposed to be asleep at night. Right. If you put a screen in front of their face and shine a bunch of blue light, it's telling their brain it's the middle of the day. And of course they're going to still be awake at midnight. You know, it's with my daughter. We let her have an iPad. I put it on- um, airplane mode and let her download stuff and turn the phones, turn it red. But then we take it away completely at like seven 30. And by eight o'clock, she's just like running up to her room. Like, yep, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what we do. And she falls asleep yeah. and you know, yeah, she'll sleep all the way through until eight o'clock the next morning. Cause I do think teens need to sleep a little bit more cause they're in a growth and development phase, but teens that are needing to sleep till like noon, one o'clock in the afternoon, like because they're staying up till, till midnight, you know, it's, mm-hmm. if you just keep the screens away from them, which is easier said than done, you know, my daughter's special needs. So I can kind of do more with her than a regular, I'm sure a regular 16 year old girl would be kicking my butt right now. Um, but <laughs> cause they, they do things like when I was 16, I'm like, Oh God, no. Um, they, and they, that's they what I what wonder. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's what no, I wonder no. about. Like if we, optimized children's environment when they were growing how much healthier could we be as adults because I look at my life as a child my yeah I was working shift work all through high school Mm -hmm. you know up until 10 o'clock at night around blue light going home and I wonder why I had the issues that I did yeah and imagine if we fostered a good environment for children how smart could they be like how much better mental health could they have how more able would their bodies be if we just implemented this into their growing lives? Like even the way light impacts human growth hormone release, like that's massive and everyone knows mm-hmm. how important that is. Oh, I yeah. just, and, and I'm so excited. And I'm sure you do the same thing in your fertility program. It's like, I'm seeing the quantum kids now actually, yep. you know, turning one, turning two years old and just seeing how much energy they they're have. So like, smart. Like my son, so like- smart. My mom, you know, she's been around kids forever. She used to watch kids in our home when I was growing up. So she knows babies and she knows development. 
And mm-hmm. she's just like continually amazed with my son. He's 18 months. And she's like, he's real, like he's doing everything like way sooner than most babies. You know, I'm like, mm-hmm. I know he's been like that. He was like babbling at five weeks old, you know, mm-hmm. like he's, he just started doing, and that was also me eating salmon row during my whole pregnancy and quinton mm-hmm. and staying away from oh, medical. Sarah, that's so dangerous. How could you oh, eat salmon when you're pregnant? And raw milk and, you know. Oh my gosh. All yeah, I think, um, do. I think that's a credit to everything that you're doing. So well done. You're obviously a great mother for oh, both your children. You. Um, yeah. I went and visited a client the other day um, who she couldn't, she's actually my only client from my hometown where I live. So it's like a whole different experience being in person with somebody. Mm-hmm. It's so beautiful. Um, but she's 37 and she could not get pregnant at all. She'd been trying for seven years and now she's oh. pregnant. She's actually 33 weeks this week. Um, she's 37 years old. So her first child at 37, 38. Um, and I went over to her house the other day. I said, lift up your shirt. And she showed me her stomach and it's like so tan. And I was like, good job. Yay. <laughs> good job. Lovely. I love it. I love it. Well, what's next for you? What are you thinking as far as all this quantum stuff goes? I know you mentioned you were doing practitioner course and what are you thinking with all of this that you want to do or where you want to go? And if you don't have an answer right off the bat <laughs> too. <laughs> no, that's okay. Um, I mean, I'm quite young. I like to have fun. I like connecting with people. So I have a couple of big projects in the line, which is exciting. Um One is that I have a very unique view on health um, and I share that view with someone who's just done so much for me. It's incredible. But Dr. Jalal Khan, which I know you've had on the podcast before, um, you know, we intertwine quantum biology with spirituality and not even spirituality, I would say, but just more of a trauma focused lens Mm. um, with a couple of other cool things that I won't mention, but uh, we've been utilizing this method for a long time now and been achieving some incredible results. And so I think we're going to be turning that into a practitioner training course. Nice. Um, so we're very excited to get that up and, and running. That should be released maybe in August this year. And then I was kind of thinking, you know, I'm like Max Golhan, he's, you know, doing these great things and Sarah's doing these great courses and Carrie is such a good educator. Where do I fit into the package? I'm like, well, I can bring everyone together And so my first retreat is going to be held um, the end of November 2024 this year to December um, in El Salvador. And that is the industry's first educational based retreat. So it's going to be based on education, building your redox, you know, being around that magnetism, the sand, the beach and actually getting to know the community in real life. So that's something I'm very excited for. And it's very exciting. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Excited to see it all come to life after so much hard work (laughs) going into the planning and preparation. That's amazing. Well, I'll make sure to link everything below the episode so people can know where to look for you. And and if they're interested in going to the retreat, are you, um, what's, what do you have a website, Instagram, and I'll put all that in the show notes as well. But if somebody's just driving and maybe they just want to look you up, what's an easy way to find you? Yeah, I think the best way to find me is just on Instagram. I'm most active. It's just Kira, um, K-I-E-R-A, Lee, L-E-A, wellness. And yeah, you can find me over there. Ask me questions. I'm, uh, yeah, less active these days because I'm just so busy, but I do always respond to DMs. It might just take a little while. (laughs) Wonderful. Well, I'm excited to share this with my community and get people turned on to your work and all the wonderful things that you're doing. And I just really appreciate you taking the time out and being here today. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. I know how much work goes into having a podcast. Um, And so coming along as a guest is definitely taking some work off my hands. So thank you. Thank you.